welcome to That's Entertainment, the weekly show from Groovy. As you can see, I'm still not Ben. He's back from his travels next week. But until then, it's down to me, Nick, to present this week's show. This week, we're looking at the success of Top Gun Maverick in cinemas around the globe and taking a deep dive into exactly what some of those encouraging box office results represent for cinema in 2022. First, the numbers. Top Gun Maverick delivered an outstanding 248 million at the global box office over its extended weekend debut. In the US, the film took $151 million over the Memorial Day holiday weekend, doing significantly better than distributor Paramount predicted. According to The Hollywood Reporter, heading into the holiday weekend, Paramount tried to temper expectations, since tracking showed the film opening to 92 million plus. But tracking, one of Hollywood's favorite pastimes, has become fraught in the pandemic era. Exhibitors were especially bullish on the pick and were already thinking it would hit 125 to 150 million. Paramount shouldn't have worried. According to Deadline Hollywood, Intelligence reports that 11.1 million North American moviegoers would have seen Top Gun 2 through the end of day on Monday, blowing away the 2 million opening weekend traffic of the 1986 picture. Variety reported that Top Gun Maverick is the highest grossing domestic debut in Cruise's 40 year career and his first to surpass 100 million on opening weekend. It's also one of the top pandemic era openings after Spider Man No Way Home. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and The Batman. Audiences over 40 years old, the people who were top of mind when Paramount greenlit another Top Gun, turned out in force. They were 55% of ticket buyers, which is impressive because it's the demographic that has been the most reluctant to return to theaters. Still, the dazzling stunts in Maverick managed to entice a significant percentage of millennial moviegoers. 45% of people were 35 or younger, who were not alive when Top Gun opened 36 years ago. The need to get those older moviegoers to return to the cinema cannot be overstated. It's been well documented that if admissions are to return to pre-COVID levels, those audiences have to return to. At the end of last year, former Cinemark CEO Mark Zaradi acknowledged the problem, but also successfully predicted the solution in an interview with Business Insider. Older demographics, the 50 plus audience, are the last to come back, but it's a matter of them feeling a bit more comfortable. I think if that happens, and movies come out that appeal to them, I think we'll see them come back. Well, Top Gun Maverick proved to be that movie. As The Hollywood Reporter noted, breaking down those numbers further, more than 70% of Top Gun 2's audience was over the age of 25, including 55% over the age of 35, 38% over 45, and 18% over 55. Another trend that the film highlighted in the US was the ever-growing importance of the high-end cinema-going experience, as acknowledged in that same Business Insider report by the National Association of Theatre Owners CEO, John Fithian. Getting older audiences back may take more than good movies to attract that demographic. John Fithian thinks it's rather simple. Moviegoers want things they can't get at home, like reclining seats and high-end food and beverage options like those at the Alamo Drafthouse cinema chain, where customers order from their seats. And according to The Hollywood Reporter once again, IMAX and premium formatted screens turned in a whopping 37% of the gross. IMAX alone turned in a four-day Memorial Day record gross of $21 million in North America. Perhaps not surprisingly, this led to the eternally upbeat Rich Gelfond, CEO of IMAX, saying in a statement, if you thought movies were dead, Go see Top Gun Maverick, and then let me know what you think. This film heralds the return of the summer blockbuster, and is a catalyst that will accelerate demand for movie going, like an F-18 breaking the sound barrier. There's no way you sit in a theatre with a huge screen and chest-pounding speakers and come away thinking there's any other way you want to experience Top Gun Maverick. Overseas, the box office result was equally as encouraging. The film took 124 million from 62 markets, a result made all the more impressive by the fact that it has yet to open in such significant territories as China, Korea, and Russia. In 32 of those markets, the film is Cruise's biggest opening ever, and in 18, it's Paramount's best for a live action title. The number one international territory was the UK and Ireland, where those admissions will have come as a relief to cinema owners, as the return of those 40 plus moviegoers has been slower than predicted. By the end of Q1 this year, an estimated 60% of the audience for the last film that appealed to that demographic 
Daniel Craig's final outing with James Bond in No Time to Die had yet to make a repeat visit to their local cinema. As Screen Daily reported, a long-awaited sequel, Top Gun Maverick, took flight in 737 UK Ireland cinemas. The fifth widest opening of all time in the territory. It's the top international territory with an estimated $19.5 million, including previews. The biggest opening there for Cruise. France comes second with an estimated $11.7 million. Both countries benefited from the actor-producer's presence ahead of the release. In the UK, at this year's Royal Film Performance, and in France, at the Cannes Film Festival. The Hollywood Reporter once again picked up on the appeal of IMAX to those international moviegoers. Maverick employed IMAX cameras, and the film grossed $10.4 million in the former overseas through Sunday. That represents 8.4% of the international box office from only 350 screens. IMAX also saw its biggest opening weekend for crews in 50 markets worldwide with the sequel. Amongst those, 17 delivered top 10 all-time IMAX opening weekends, including the UK, France, Germany, Belgium, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Argentina, Sweden and Norway. It seems inevitable that the film will continue to do very well everywhere for the coming days and weeks. It has a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a rare A-plus cinema score. Close to half of the US audience said Top Gun 2 exceeded expectations, while another 30% said they would see it again in theatres. The film's positive word of mouth should be helpful in continuing to reach younger crowds. And there is no other major theatrical release opening until Jurassic World Dominion on the weekend of June 10th. There is also speculation that the film may have a longer theatrical window than 45 days, which has become the norm for Paramount and other studios post-COVID. As Newsweek put it recently, Cruz is a noted critic of shortened theatrical windows, which means that fans might be waiting longer than usual for Top Gun 2 to make it to streaming. Top Gun Maverick is in cinemas now. And if Tom Cruise had his way, it will stay that way for a long time. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And Ben will no doubt greet you next week. Bye-bye.